Welcome to the show, Make It Plain, the Eric, Key, and Cameron show. In this episode, we will continue our discussion with our good brother, Eric Owens, and his new book, Getting to Know God. We're definitely looking forward to it. This podcast is dedicated to addressing various topics from a biblical perspective, coupled with practical solutions for daily application. In essence, we want to take the Bible, which is relevant for all that we need in this life and the one to come, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And we want to just recognize the admonition that the Lord God gave to the prophet Habakkuk um, to make it plain. And so if you guys would like to reach out to us, um, you can contact us uh, via email at makeitplainhab22, that's Habakkuk22 at gmail.com. We love you guys to reach out to us. We do our very best. It might be a little bit slow, but we do our very best <laughs> to, to correspond to every email. It, it takes a little bit of time because we do we do get several, but I promise you we don't take them for granted. We love them. We answer every one. And so please, please, please reach out to us. You guys have been so great to us. Um, your your comments, your encouragements, they mean a lot to us. And again, we do not take them for granted. But we would love to use your questions or your comments to drive show content. Um, we just we just believe in, you know, if you guys are, you know, being good enough to to tune in and spend your time with us, then then we would love to repay you by, you know, addressing what you guys would like us to address. So um, on this episode, we still have with us our good brother. Eric Owens, and we were discussing in a previous episode um, his book, as you can see it, his newest one in front of us, Getting to Know God, um, his journey, um, just, just the God he had learned and through some life circumstances and some life um, experiences, coming to know the God of the Bible. Um, and that is, that is such a, I know we all can attest to that and and our various walks and, and our maturation as gospel preachers and, and, and being so um, being so, you know, overwhelmed with creating lessons and studying and preparing for other people that you just kind of forget, you know, your relationship and it kind of goes to the back burner, your relationship with God. And, um, and I know I, I remember, I can remember, um, I can remember very vividly when that moment was for me. And I tell you, man, my preaching went to another level. Um, you know, my, my interaction with God's people, my view of his church, it all, it all changed because I gotten to know, um, the God of the Bible. And so even though mine is, you know, mine is different than Eric's and I would imagine we we're all a bit different. Um, but I can, it, it resonated with me in, in, in this book, um, about, uh, about getting no God to know God on this, on this episode, like the last one, we had talked a little bit about, about some, some books that you also authored in addition to, um, getting to know God and just, and as a way of a plug for our good brother, um, he has put in good effort and good work on these books. Um, if you're so inclined, you can visit amazon.com and just type his name in Eric Owens and, it will give you a drop down or a menu of, of the book titles um, that he's authored. And so if you like to, you can get them there. Um, or if you need some help with that, just contact us and we'll, you know, we'll send you a link, you know, we'll email you back a link where you can, you can, you can patronize him and, and, um, and purchase his books. I, I promise you, you will be blessed by them. Yeah. And, and we, and we mentioned earlier, you know, he likes the kind of money that folds. <laughs> The kind that jingles is good, but the kind that folds is better. You know, now listen, y'all know how. Listen, you you guys know how stupid we are. You you know that we're we're not we're not pushing prosperity by no, any means, guys. No. But but a, a, a labor is worth if it's higher. Absolutely. That is biblical, Absolutely. and we should certainly not. Um, and the content is, the ox that the, treads out the corn, and the content is worth it. So, content, and then yeah. Paul said, "He that preaches the gospel should live by it." And the content again is worth it. Amen. So, um, so it takes money to produce, um, to produce a product. Right. And so, um, so, so we just appreciate him. So, so Eric, tell us, tell us a little bit more about, um, your other books. Like tell, tell okay. us about those, if you don't mind, just, <laughs> just kind of what they, um, you know, what they entail and, 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 and what, what we as the consumers, uh, could expect to, sure. to get from them. I'd be glad to. This um, this book here, uh, it's entitled "So You Want to Be Happy Teens," 
And uh, if you look at the cover, there's actually dog tags <laughs> on the cover because I served in the Marine Corps. And so as a result of that, I wanted to write something for young people about, I entitled the chapters missions instead of chapters. And so each one is a mission. And uh, I weave it through my boot camp experiences and my military experiences. And, and so mission one is obedience. Because when you arrive in boot camp, that is the first thing they teach you that you will obey and uh, <laughs> not might <laughs> not no, maybe <laughs> I, I tell the story of arriving in san diego on the base they bring you in at night i think jehu drives the bus and uh feels like things gonna tip over you get, you get there and pull in and uh, you see some i call them shadowy figures out in the front and they're talking to each other and then there's a moment of calm and the door opens on the bus and a man comes on and starts screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> and he is blaming you for everything <laughs> that's wrong in the world. And you are thrust off the bus. And you don't know it at the time, but there's some yellow footprints on the ground. The heels are together at a 45 degree angle. And they tell you to emulate what's on the ground. And that's how you learn to stand as a Marine right then that night. And from that point on, it's do this, do this, do this. You are marched, you are moved, you, your hair is cut, your bags are given, and you're processed all night into the next morning where you stay awake the entire next day. And it just starts with immediate obedience. Wow. And it is just from that day forward. It's, and so I'm, I'm saying to children, it's not like that with your parents. <laughs> 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 Although children might feel like it is. But it children, could be worse. <laughs> It could definitely be worse. <laughs> the point is, though, at, it's your mission as a child to obey your parents. I, I believe. I believe the 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 master commander said something like that in Ephesians six. Well, I believe it did. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Because Children. this is right. That's right. Obey your parents in the Lord. In the Lord. The next chapter is on honor. So fast forward from that training to the end of boot camp, and you're about to leave now, and the attitude and disposition toward the drill instructors has changed because they've been with you all the way through all that obedience. Wow. And at some point through the process, you realize if you're getting up at five, they're getting up at four, four thirty. If you're running, they're having to run next to you. If you're doing it, they're doing it too. And so by the end, you really appreciate and honor these men. And so you move from obedience with your parents to honoring what they've done for you. And so I say in the book that obedience looks forward, honor looks backward. Honor is appreciating what your parents have done. And as you go through obedience and you realize you get older, you look back, you honor your mother and father. And so the missions just kind of keep going like this all the way through the book. That's, that's awesome, man. That's a great comparison because in getting to know God, you share yeah. your military, not all of it, obviously, but you share aspects of your military experience. And one of them was, and I, I hope we don't trigger any PTSD, brother, uh, but the the section on when you were in the war, yeah, like that was amazing, man. Like I I'm I'm serious. I was on the edge of my seat as I was reading the book. I was devouring the book. I mean, it's a great write, brother. Like I it's was, a great read, man. Like you write it in such a way. It's written in such a way that that I th I think you chunked it very well. Right. I think it has very great transitions. Um. The you know. The, the attention that you put toward engaging the reader is great. I mean, you did a great job on the book. Uh, uh, I appreciate it. Man. Yep. About, about that, that small section of being, him being in the war, I was telling him, I was like, I remember that time in history. Yes, I know. I, I remember, remember that like, time. I and remember. now knowing that he was yeah, there. I remember, I was telling him, I remember them reporting about the war in the Middle East mm -hmm. at that time in history on the evening news. And just to think now, I know somebody personally that was actually on and, the and, front lines. That man just called you old. <laughs> <laughs> he called you history. He just called you history. I didn't say that. He, I didn't just, say that. He just called you history, man. I, I'm just putting that out there. If he was wrong, I'd be upset. <laughs> but he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I mean, that's that's just a, a great perspective, though. You know. Yeah. It was it's great, great, great. Yeah, that's that's awesome that you have. So you want to be happy teens. That's right. So this other book is entitled uh, Do You Take God? And it's about marriage. And so in the Bible, God presents himself to us in these two relationships as one married to his people in both covenants 
and as the father or parent of his children. And uh, when you become both of these things, you really get a new insight into God and scripture and the relationships. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is about committing to God's design for marriage. I really tried to write a book that emphasizes God is the creator of marriage. And God, when he created it, had certain things in mind. Mm -hmm. And if we do what God had in mind, marriage will be great. But when I was growing up, there was a, a man who was a mechanic. And we called him Shade Tree Mechanic. <laughs> you remember those guys? <laughs> so his favorite line was, I can get you running. <laughs> now you <laughs> he, 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 he could fix the carburetor. <laughs> I can get you running. That's what he would say. <laughs> now, this, hey, that, might have, that belt might be some yarn, but you know, yeah, I'll get you running. There's a coat hanger underneath your hood, <laughs> but I can get you running. This is not but for to be how con- long though. <laughs> now that's a good question. That's different. That's we didn't see. I never promised that. No, I, I said I can get you running. This does yeah. not come with warranties. This is not, and these are not factory uh, parts. <laughs> this is not that. My, my point in saying that is, people's marriage is like that. They have figured out a way to keep it running, and God's design is warranted. This is right. factory parts. This will be optimal. This won't just be making it work. Right. And so that's the the thrust of the book, ultimately, to get back to what God intended for marriage. That's great. And, man. and you know the thing about that, man. Like we all know or we all have some type of experience with somebody working on your car. Oh, for sure. That's not that's not we all got that uncle. <laughs> Man. Like like he drunk uncle. Like we, <laughs> we all got we all got drunk uncles. Right? Man. I'm trying to tell you. And they mechanic, they can do everything. Mechanically do everything. inclined. They can do everything. Man. I'm not saying this man was a drunk. I just want to put that out there. Well, no, Other no, people know the man I'm talking about. Yeah, no, we're not saying that. that. Yeah, we're not saying that. Because they'll get me. You know? I'm, I'm, yeah. ju- I'm just yeah, saying mine was. there and told people. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying mine was. Okay. <laughs> man, that's, that's, that's the reason they started making lemon laws. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, he was true to his word. I can get you right. He did. That's what he I said. Listen, he, he, did did lie. Lie. I he did not you. lie. The man kept his word. That's, that's, that's all you need. And we, and, but when you talk about marriage, and if, if, it, if, we, if we can get down through, um, through some of the information that we just kind of wanted to, you know, rack your brain about. Sure. Um, you know, you, you stated that, you know, that marriage is, is a covenant you know, that God created. And obviously we have an episode, I can't remember which one it is, but we have an episode dealing with marriage and we talk about in, in depth about those very things. But somebody sent me a, a, a meme that said, the reason our legal system, our laws are 17,000 pages long is because we couldn't obey 10 lines on some tables. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so There's a lot of truth in that meme, man. There's a lot of truth in that meme. But when it comes to... um. When it comes to, to, you know what I did? Because I, getting to know God, I've, I've purchased it for a couple of preachers mm. as gifts because for me, it, it was like I read it as a preacher mm. because obviously I know you as a brother, but also as a preacher and as a, as a friend, but I read it like a preacher. I was like, man, because I told you, you know, I stated in the previous episode that that line resonated with me. Like you preach the guy you learn and the congregation learns the God that you preach. And, um, and so that resonated with me as a preacher. Right, right. So go, go ahead, Ken. No, I was just going to say uh, in this particular book, getting to know God, um, you know, the thing that I was just overwhelmed with just the, uh, the things that you had to overcome mm-hmm. and, and, mm-hmm. and the scripture that kept coming to my mind was Ecclesiastes 1, 9 and 10. Like, yeah. The, you know, it wasn't new in his life, right? not new now, but the fact that he overcame. Yeah. And and the way that he overcame was God. Right. And so, you know, I'm just thinking about how, like, you know, for the person that's dealing with some of the same obstacles, same problems, dilemmas, choices they got to make. Right. Like, they can be overcome. Yeah. And they come to us all. And that's what, you know, that's, and I think that's the beauty in how our Lord concluded his Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 7, 20, right. 24 and following. It's, you know, and I've said this from the pulpit. That you know there are similarities and differences in these two structural, um, you know, these buildings, these houses. You know, they both, you know, the foundations were different, but the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew upon both houses. Absolutely. Like the like the house built on the rock wasn't immune from the storm, and and that's such a great lesson that 
maybe glossed over as, you know, as people who sit in the pews reading that passage, they may think, oh, you know, there's, there's, there's a, there's a grand importance in me building my life on the word of God. And that's true. Mm-hmm. But not to the exclusion of understanding that, right. you know, just because you do that right. doesn't mean that life right. is going to be perfect. Right. So you still have to, because if you don't consider that, you'll be caught off guard. You'll be like, hey, I, I built my house on the rock. Why is this happening? Hey, wait, wait a minute. God never promised. As a matter of fact, Jesus told his disciples, John right. 16, 33, you know, these things have I spoken un, unto you that in me you might have peace. Right. You know, in this world, you should have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so just like you were stating, Cam, in the book and watching you overcome, you know, and how you were able to do that by learning God and and studying and truly reading the Bible. And and you're, man, I tell you what, when when you culminate that thing with (laughs) Moses (laughs) and... And the the God that Moses came to know, that was beautiful. Oh. Or that even was, that and, was beautiful. And even before Moses, yeah. the section with the um the two men who say they knew God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the one like they both say they know God, but they responded mm-hmm. differently. Right. You know, so just knowing that there are many people who who make that claim, they make that profession that they know God, but then how do you respond to the God that you know? Right. And so, man, when you read that section of the book and you start thinking about, man, like, what is my response to the God that I'm reading about studying? So I guess my question, well, not so much a question for the person who's watching, dealing with obstacles, choices, these things, the the, the trials of life, as Eric mentioned, what would you say personally to them? I mean, because they can read the book, but just, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, um, all of that's in there. And I, and I appreciate y'all for, for talking about it. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of people are dealing with mental health issues. We wouldn't have called them that when I was growing up. Right. They just wouldn't have been called that. They'd, they'd have called it been something else and you would get over it, deal with it, fix it. And so that's not really the way we would approach people today. There are challenges and issues and a lot of it goes back to childhood. And um, I, I, would, I would try to help a man get to know God by starting in the beginning. And that's, I don't know if Genesis is my favorite book, but I spend a lot of time in Genesis because it's God's introduction of himself to us. Mm -hmm. And um, I was talking to somebody just the other day, giving an example of of how you can read the Bible and miss God. I said, what's chapter one about in the Bible? And the person said creation. I said, okay, one and two. I said, what's chapter three about? The person said sin. I said, okay, what's chapter four about? The person said, I don't know. I said, well, sacrifice, Cain and Abel. They said, yeah, that's right. I said, well, what's chapter six about? They said, are we to the flood yet? I said, the flood. I said, um, who haven't you mentioned yet? You've gone through six chapters of the Bible and you've never once mentioned God. So I said, the way you read the Bible is you appreciate the fact that chapter one is not about creation. It's about the God who created. Absolutely. Chapter three is not about sin. It's about the God who redeems. Chapter four is not about Cain and Abel. It's about the God who allows you into communion and sacrifice. And if you fail and fall at it, he'll come back and heal. And so you walk through the Bible differently and you make God the center. Even as a preacher, this was my failing. I, I knew the doctrines. I knew the stories, but I was missing the God behind the stories and behind the doctrines. And when you meet God, you talked about Moses. God tells Moses who he is. And then he demonstrates who he is throughout the whole Bible. And when I merge those two things. And so that's what I would, I would try to help somebody appreciate, man, God loves you so much. God is so for you. God is so gracious and so benevolent. And, and we can't, you know, we struggle to appreciate just how far God is willing to go for us to succeed. Absolutely. And if the cross doesn't tell us, you know, it's, it's difficult to imagine what could. I, um, the devotion that I wrote this morning for the church um, had to do with Psalm 8, 4, 5, and 6. What is man that thou art mindful in him? And how this world can, in very many ways, cause us to um, have a devalued view of ourselves. Right. But God has never devalued the, the human soul, ever. And, and I know that my getting to know God moment would have me view the Bible in terms of what is the thing... 
what is the theme of the Bible from Genesis one to Revelation twenty two? That that's when I was, that's that's the question I asked. <clears throat> what is the theme that runs from the beginning to the end? And 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 so I looked for that theme in every chapter, every book. Like that's the theme I look for: the salvation of man through Jesus Christ to the glory of God. Like that's every chapter of the Bible, every book I search for that theme. And, and the Bible actually says that, that exact thing. Second Corinthians five seventeen to nineteen. Yes, God was in Christ mm -hmm. reconciling Reconcile. the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. That's what. It and uh, Man, from the before the world before was the created, world. that's right. You know, and I think about another interesting fact, and you know, we let Key chime in, but man, when you start thinking about as you're reading about God, starting the Genesis and working your way through, man, you realize He doesn't make any mistakes. No, and He doesn't do anything arbitrary. Arbitrarily, no, He doesn't. Everything He does is for purpose. Purpose is planned, is intentional. Right. Um, and it's like you start thinking, like, man. God really does care for me. He oh, for really sure. does love me. Yeah. He, he really is active in my life. Absolutely. And, and he's not detached from us as the creator. Deism. I, as I, deism I, that's, that's exactly would. That's what I was thinking. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, I'm I was, sorry. That's exactly what I was thinking. There's no, the deistic view is just obscene. No. It's, it should be just smashed and thrown away. Oh, it's blasphemy. It is 100% blasphemy. I like what you said, Eric. And I, I try to encourage people to have that same mindset. Because it's easy to look at, man, David did this. And, you know, we talk about all the great characters or people of the Bible. But, man, what about God who put them in that yeah. position? Right. Like, that's the, man, I, I think that's something that is very powerful and definitely we all need to focus on. Yeah, sure. Because, again, without God, what do we have? Yeah. You know, you remove God out the equation and you, you have, that battle can't be won. No. Dave, you, don't, you don't hear the story of David. But then right. goes back to what you said about the beginning of the teens book, obedience. How do we learn to be obedient and then to honor and love and trust God? And I want to say one, one quick thing about, the, about this book also about the getting to know God. It's, not, it, it's more like so conversational. And I really appreciate that. Those, those books like that are easy to get into because it's not you didn't try to give us flowery language. You didn't use all these big words you I gave. I know that many people. <laughs> And then, and then it's, 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 That's it's, the first it's, 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 it's personal, <laughs> it it's, is. It's, it's commentary, right. you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a study. It is. So it, it encompasses a lot so of much. things uh, uh, Key, with this one. Key, that's why I taught math when I was in classroom. I don't know no English. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Look, that's what I told. I'm a therapist. I can say it, but don't ask me to spit. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, well, listen, guys, we have, we have, we have spent. Uh, much time in, in, in the book, Getting to Know God. Um, hopefully we have, uh, you are intrigued and we have piqued your interest. It is a great book. And again, as Keith stated, it is not a glorification of Eric. Amen. It is, you just have to read the book. I mean, it is, there's no really, there's no way to really explain that to you. It's his journey, but it's about God. It is truly about God. And so you will see I will guarantee you, you will see yourself in some aspect of this book, in right. his journey. You will see, maybe not all of it, but there will be moments in this, in this read where, where you see yourself. So we, we encourage you to go get the book. And then if you, and if you, and if you see yourself, you start asking yourself that question. Right. Have I gotten to know God? Right. Have I truly gotten to know God? And so I think that's, that's, that's that can be a it. little scary too. Absolutely. You know, it can be a little scary. That's, um, and then again, that's the accountability on self. Right. And if I'm doing, again, it's not, Eric is not setting a standard for himself, but am I, are we living up to God's standards? Right. And, you know, that's something we really do have to question ourselves. There was a young man who stood up Wednesday night of a congregation, young man, 20 something years old, very, very, he's been, been, as you say, brought up in the church all his life. And he did the invitation and he called the congregation out and told them, we don't evangelize. I've been, I've been here for 20 years. I'm 20, I think he's 22 years old. He said, we don't evangelize. He said, what are we doing? We sit here in our building like, we, like we're done, like, we don't, like we've accomplished what we need to accomplish. He said, you can hear pin drop. It was so quiet. It's key, key, what you say we do, Key? We just sit there. No, Key, what, what else you say we do? We, we, oh, my, my, my phrase? Yes. We come in, man, we take our sip, leave our tip, and then we dip. <laughs> 
Right. That's that's all we do. And that's I love it. That's that's it. I love it. I love it. We, that, we take our seed, wow. take our sip, leave our tip and dip. And I let it rip. It. Let and it, then we let it rip. Let it look. I I let it, it ride. I love it. <laughs> Guys, listen, man. We could we could talk all day. We are not going to get to our framework. I'm sorry. We uh <laughs> <laughs> see us what it is. So let's for the last 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 few minutes here, let's talk about. Um, because you have written on marriage and family and how does God, how does the word of God impact areas like manhood and marriage and family and parenting? Because obviously we don't have time, but there are, you know, there are attacks on, on these aspects. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, with regards to manhood, uh, again, Genesis 1, 26, 27 tells us God made us in his image. And so it would do us well to appreciate just what that means. We, we are made in the image of God. You mentioned Psalm 8, and he crowned us with glory and honor. Mm-hmm. So the reality is that God deems us worthy and glorious beings. There's no apologies. There's no nothing lacking. We start with God as God would have us to. And uh, we get that attack, and we lessen it by sin and our own doubt and issues. But in so far as God is concerned, when you come back to him, he esteems man. In fact, he thought so much of man that he took on flesh to die. Amen. To redeem mankind. Uh, And so, man, you can't say enough about God's creation and then God's actions toward man to infuse in us what I call God esteem, not (laughs) self-esteem. People try to esteem themselves. No, God esteems you and that's sufficient. You don't need anything else. You don't need any validation. And so that helped me as a person. And then with regards to marriage, we married young and I wish I could sit and say there were no mistakes made, but that wouldn't be true. And uh, one sister read the book and she said, you know, I loved your wife before, but now I love her (laughs) so much more. (laughs) <laughs> and I pray for her. It's going to be a special place in heaven for Sister Vanessa. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, my journey is largely Vanessa's journey, too, even though it's it's different. Right. But, it, you know, I was married at 20 years old. So that journey all the way through has well, I, been I, hers. I, I thought in marriage, husband and wife are heirs together. Well, I'm the, the greatest, greatest of life. life. That's true. <laughs> It doesn't mean the husband act right, so it doesn't mean. <laughs> well, she said she gonna pray for Vanessa. Not- <laughs> right, right, right there. So. But my my marriage changed, my parenting changed. The more I learned God and His goodness Amen. toward me, uh, my children, I tried to be better to them, and so it's just blessed my life all the way through. Well, listen, guys, we, Eric, we love you, man. We appreciate you. You're going to stay on with us? And, and yes, sir. To, all right. Well, listen, when we get back, we will try to uh, have a little bit more time with Eric. If you'd like to contact us, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, email us, make it plain, hab22 at gmail.com. Getting to know God um, at Amazon by Brother Eric Owens. May God bless you and keep you as you seek to conform your will to his. <laughs>